Christmas and welcome to a magical night on THV 11. You know, we're here at the state capitol surrounded by Christmas traditions. We've all got them. We've got them at THV 11. Every year we go back and round up the best feel good stories of the year to show you how sweet this year really was and get ready for some big surprises like this first story that takes place under the golden arches. There are some sounds just synonymous with the drive through And at this Caddo Valley McDonald's, no sound is as recognizable as this. You do the same. I appreciate you. Come back and see us. Aretha Nelson has been here for the better part of two decades, always greeting customers with a smile. I keep them going in the drive through I do. Rain or shine, always committed to her customers. If I made anybody a day or touch anybody, I knew that I'd do my job. But this time, they're committed to her. She was told it was a video shoot for McDonald's marketing. Then it turned out to be the best Christmas gift she could have ever gotten. The real reason you are meeting with your work family here today. Aretha may have her work family in Caddo Valley, but her actual family lives hundreds of miles away in Virginia. She wore a mask with pictures of her grandkids on it during the pandemic, the closest she could be to them. I want to say I'm on four years now. It's been a minute. So an anonymous customer, only identified as one of Aretha's regulars, sent in a card for the holidays. <laughs> Not just to wish her well, <laughs> but to make sure those four years apart don't continue to grow. To spread love during the pandemic by sharing the smiles. Those grandbabies when you can see no smile. That's why she did this. And you know, I was blown away. And I think that Aretha was blown away for sure. Aretha may never know who gave her the money, but that's okay. Because while she's used to her customers needing her, this time, all she needed was them. But I do have my ticket, so it is real. I'm going to get to see them grandbabies soon. In Caddo Valley, Ian Russell, THB 11 News. Eight years ago, guy woke me up, like I say, at 3 o'clock in the morning and gave me the vision. A vision Eric Lamb still has today. Because a lot of these kids need, need that, you know, need that support, need that uh, guardian angel to let them know that they are loved. This room is his very own version of Santa's workshop. After all, he does refer to himself as the real Santa, formerly the black Santa. At least 15,000 gifts of different shapes and sizes bought and hand delivered by Lamb himself. Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Missouri. And aside from bikes, socks, and even underwear, he added a new gift option on this year's application, and it's something so many kids don't see often. Snacks, which is a lot, one of the new things that I have. People, a lot of kids ask for snacks on the application because when school's out, they don't eat. As the real Santa makes his finishing touches and checks his list twice, he has one request from you all. Uh, look out for your neighbors, look out for kids, you know. If this is the season of giving back. Be a blessing to somebody. And Conway, Frederick Price, THV 11 News. A simple gadget. So once you've got it on and it's secured, it's going to be able to let your arm breathe. Created by Arkansas State University Occupational Therapy Assistance students as a part of a class project. And then, of course, may I hug you? Yes. And then you come in for that big bear hug. The small device leaving a huge impression. Come here. <laughs> you can give him a hug. This is Kevin Eubanks, and this is a Aww. video of him giving his first hug in eight years. That's a good hug. <laughs> Kevin had a stroke in 2014. Since then, he's had limited mobility in his arm. His daughter, Emily Sisko, is an adjunct professor at ASU's Occupational Therapy Department. She gave her students a challenge, asking them to create adaptive equipment for her father. You know, they knew that he loved fishing, missed fishing. Um, they knew that he had trouble engaging with his grandkids and playing games with them. 
but they honed in on one small statement where he said he missed hugging again. We just all came together and said, that is so sad that he wants to hug and he can't. We've just got to do something about that. The result was hug again. Larissa Garcia, Lisa James, Casey Parsons, and Erica Dexter put their minds to the test, not knowing how much it would help their teacher's father. How do you like that, Papa? How do you oh, like that, hug, Papa? We have family that live off and they've said, okay, I'm ready to come in so I can get that hug. We're a family of huggers. So, so we know how important that is and, and now we're all looking forward to it. You wanna give Rig a hug? I sure do. <laughs> come here, young lad. <laughs> In oh. Jonesboro, Ashley Godwin, THV 11 News. This is the tree of fallen heroes here at the state capitol. You know, this is a tough season for people who have lost someone close to them. And this next story actually begins that way. Oh, but stay with it. You'll be amazed by the ending. Here's Roley Hoyt. During that traffic stop, Officer Scrimshire was shot in the line of duty. Unfortunately, Officer Scrimshire has passed away due to his injuries. The shooting in March of 2020 left Rachel Scrimshire a widow with two young kids. And an unspeakable tragedy hurts even more when you can't speak in the first place. So she was diagnosed with apraxia. It's a neuromotor disorder where her brain has complications telling her mouth how to move. You can imagine a two and a half year old very upset only having about five to seven words in her vocabulary. She was actually diagnosed um, a month before Brent was killed, so going through that and then going through her grief and only having five to seven words was kind of hard on her and myself. Amid the darkness, the Scrimshires found sunshine. We started last year in uh, 21 with a pilot program with hippotherapy. Hippotherapy, or more commonly known as equine therapy, is the growing practice that pairs people with horses to treat various ailments and disabilities. The Scrimshires turned to Katja Summerlin and her fledgling center to treat Riverlin. It's not an exact science. It took trial and error to get the little girl silenced by grief paired with a grieving old horse named Steeler. We heard about him because he just apparently lost a pasture buddy and needed a new home. I kid you not, it was like somebody turned a tap on. It just was waterfall of babbles and words and it just started pouring out of her. It was just so clear, more words, fluid, uh, you know, pronunciation, all of that. She just took off and I'm like, wow. A horse button. A horse button? What does it do? Fresh your horse go. I would not believe it if I wasn't there. I know, I couldn't fall enough. Which one, that one? And this one too. Riverland starts kindergarten in a few months. Therapists say her apraxia has gone from severe and profound to mild. Steeler's gate unlocked the words inside the little girl, part neuroscience, part new age spirit. But no matter how you mix it, it seems like magic. He is so sweet with, especially, it seems like him and Riverland have a special bond. She was angry, sad, you know, upset, but through being able to verbalize what she wants and needs and then just riding the horse, her mood completely changed. And she's, you know, my old Riverland again, just happy and more words, but just happier and just her one of a kind self again. In Piercy, Rolly Hoyt, THV 11 News. <laughs> Between all the belly rubs, you'll find Archie greeting students in the hallways at Bryant Junior High. Oh, it boosts the overall mood. You, the smiles on the faces when you see a pet is just speaks for itself. Counselor Tracy Long says Archie has already helped several students in his first two weeks here. There was a student um, upset in the office, uh, the front office, and um, didn't want to talk because she was angry and um, she wouldn't talk to anyone. Then Archie stepped up to help. And she ended up lying on the on the floor with Archie for a long time till she could calm down and not be so angry. In his short time here, he's impacted more than just the students. The adults too. Archie's owner, Kelly Hay, says it took more than a year to get Archie ready for the job. We went through puppy training, obedience training, 
and community-based training for him to be ready to go. And Hay says the timing was just right for him to start this school year. Everything just coincided. He finished his training the same month that Brian allowed dogs in. The school district has big plans for Archie. Some of his job duties include reading with students and assisting with small group counseling. And the more attention he gets, the happier he is. <laughs> so you can mob him and he's like, just bring it on. Freshman Oakley Escobar calls the Golden Retriever a stress reliever. We have quite a few tests like this week and last week and whenever I see him it just kind of gives me like a mental break and just to like relax and get my mind off that. You get the right dog in the right place and you will see amazing changes. In Bryant, yes. Brooke Buckner, THV 11 News. Some of our favorite stories of the past year involve young people. These next two stories are about Arkansas kids whose talent and generosity made the national spotlight. Why did you choose a mullet? I just chose a mullet because I'm like, hmm, what would really embarrass my sister the most? <laughs> The Bolts family lives in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Like parents across the country, Lisa and Derek were desperate for creative things to do in 2020. We started doing crazy things with our hair. Alice did her hair teal, I went red. Alan did a mullet and my husband did a mustache. That was terrible. <laughs> what started as a way to pass the time morphed into more than a mullet for Alan. He added a faux hawk with lots of gel and then the curly perm. How did you feel about the mullet? At first, I was really questioning my parenting skills <laughs> and allowing it to happen. But when a friend told them about the USA Mullet Championship, everything changed. When I heard there was like $2,500, I'm like, I'm just going to donate it to foster care if I win. Why did you want to donate it to foster care? I was in foster care, and I know completely how it feels. In 2014, Alan and Alice were in the foster care system when they came to live with Leslie and Derek. We expected it to be a two-week thing, and then they would go to another placement. Two weeks eventually turned into adoption. And when you think of the kids in foster care, what do you think about? I just really hope they're feeling happy and hoping that a family will pick them, just like my mom, my dad picked me and my sister. As the online mullet competition ramped up, voting was in Alan's favor. As word spread, he planned to donate the prize money to foster care. Independent donations poured in. People just kept giving. And so the total was about $4,500 that the community has donated. You won! <laughs> <laughs> After three nerve-wracking rounds of voting, the kids sporting the cool shades and fresh suit had won the illustrious title USA Mullet Champion. If you had one wish out of all of this, what would it be? Foster care to go out of business and no more kids being in foster care. Meg Oliver, CBS News, Jonesboro, Arkansas. Broadway can seem a long way from Arkansas, but for eight-year-old Kennedy Pitney, it has always been her dream. I like that I get to be on stage with everybody and my, and my besties. Kennedy, with the help of her mom, Kim, wanted to audition for a Broadway musical, but not just any musical. The Music Man, starring Hugh Jackman. We submitted her. She got a call back the next day, um, which was a Friday. They told us we had to be in New York on a Monday. Um, so it was very fast and furious, and then we got the call she was cast on Tuesday. Kennedy trading Little Rock for the Big Apple, cast as the role of Gracie Shin. It was so amazing when I figured it out. I had happy tears, and I was wanting to like go around town and tell everybody. The pair quickly jetted off to New York, got an apartment, and hit the ground running. The first um number i was so like nervous but then i and then i was like oh this is fun following weeks of rehearsals it was finally time for kennedy's big night on broadway we were gifted tickets and we were able to watch her debut night and the best way i can describe it is the breath left my body now mom wasn't the only one blown away so was her co-star and leading man who received a very special gift from kennedy herself Come on. <laughs> is this our friendship bracelet? Yes. Is this like, because we're BFFs? Yes. Come here. 
the best moment of my life because I, when I just saw him, I was just like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's perfect. This week, high school sweethearts Drake Manis and Sydney Fleepa went on vacation to Arizona. Well, we've been playing golf and visited the Grand Canyon. But just a few years ago, doctors said that would have never been possible. That feels like a miracle. Every day I get myself out of bed and do things that most people with the same injury can't do. In 2018, just three months into dating, Drake took a dive into Sydney's pool, changing his life forever, explaining back then. When I hit the bottom, I just immediately knew I was paralyzed. I dove back into the pool and I'm the one that grabbed him. Sydney held him until paramedics arrived and stayed long after anyone expected her to. Did you ever have people in high school even be like, well, it's just a high school girlfriend, you know, she's not going to stick around through this. Yes, I had so many people telling me like, y'all won't last, especially after the accident. They were like, if he can't move, you won't want to be with him. And I'm like, well, Drake in a wheelchair and Drake without a wheelchair. It's still Drake sitting there. Sydney helped push him through physical therapy in Maryland, saw his first steps on the field he once ran, and cheered him on as he walked across the stage. I mean, ever since the beginning, she stuck right by me, and she's still right there. Do you ever take a minute to sit back and think about how much has changed over the last few years? I do sometimes, but I'm on the go a lot. <laughs> I like to play golf and hang out with my friends. Back to taking big swings with the person who's been through it all. We've had people come up to us and be like, y'all are so, like, y'all just look so familiar. And I'd be like, well, <laughs> this is our story. And after so many doctors said no, Drake got the most important yes. And a love story they once dreamed of, now one step closer to coming true. They're engaged. The night of Drake's accident, well, my dad woke up the next morning, he said, I had a dream that I was walking you down the aisle and Drake was standing at the end of it. That kind of like told me like he's my person. I'm meant to be with him. Reporting in Little Rock, Sarah Horbakowitz, THV 11 News. Oh, what a Christmas special this has been. We've seen the warmth and grace of a McDonald's drive through a self-appointed Santa who's caught up in the spirit of giving, a hug that embraces all of our hearts a horse that works miracles, a dog that takes on the anxieties of high school students, and a mullet that becomes a symbol of kindness. And here's the great thing. These stories barely scratch the surface. There are thousands of them that go on around us every day, not caught on camera or talked about on social media, but they're there. And they produce in all of us what this season is all about. The creative, simple, loving ways we find to be at our best. And what it produces is what the season produces, hope. Hope to keep moving forward. The hope of times to come. The kind of hope contained in the words, Merry Christmas from THV 11. Thank you for watching and good night.